We're inching closer to three months of the NBA suspension, but there's a little light at the end of the tunnel now as the Boston Celtics can get back to the practice facilities starting on Monday, June 1st. I'm Sierra Goodwill here with Joe Sway, Pavone, and Keith Smith. We know all the players on the Celtics had a little bit of different situations during their self-quarantine, some with full basketball courts and gym equipment and others with very limited access to any sort of workout materials at all. So who do you think actually benefited the most from this time off? I'm going to go with Kemba Walker, Sierra. I think Kemba, um, the only thing everyone was really worried about was his health. I mean, obviously we know Kemba doesn't have a whole lot of a postseason experience, but we do know what he's able to do on the court. He's been doing it for quite some time. So I think not people, not a lot of people were essentially concerned about him in terms of his game and what level he needs to bring it to come postseason. But I think everyone's afraid of his health. I do think this is this helped him a lot. Uh, just getting that rest, being able to recuperate and, and not having to play, you know, those last 15, 18 games and, and throughout this whole rest, I do think is very beneficial. But if I had to pick one player, I, I definitely would say Kemba Walker. Obviously, he's very important all-star point guard for the Celtics. Jason Tatum's had one heck of a, a season, but they're also going to need Kemba Walker to uh, play at a particular high level if they want this uh, playoff run to go deep. Yeah, I, I'm going to split it between two guys. I'm going to go with Gordon Hayward. His uh, foot and ankle issue, issue was really a, an overuse thing. It's one of those things where if he's going to need spotted days off, it sounds like here and there as that gets at two points where it gets to be a little too painful for him to go on. So I think that's really important that he, he was able to get this downtime. So I think he'll come back good. And then the other guy is Marcus Smart for me. I mean, I, I lost track of how many injuries Marcus Smart was dealing with. There's probably at least four or five and bruises and bumps and, you know, pulls and who else knows what it was going on with him. So I think him getting off his feet, feet, that's really important for a guy like Mark Smart. My anticipation had been with roughly a month left in the regular season, we were going to start seeing Brad Stevens start spotting guys rest days anyway. And I think this now obviously clearly took that out of the equation and hopefully everybody comes back ready to go. Yeah. I want to talk about Gordon Hayward a little bit too, because he was also facing spotty criticism throughout the whole season about whether or not his confidence was down. But then you had the Hayward supporters who saying he's doing his job as a role player. He's distributing the ball. The, the team is better when he's on the court. Do you think that mentally there's always been questions around Gordon Hayward's mental capacity and his confidence? Do you think this time off has affected that in any way? I, I would say no. I, I think he's mentally strong anyway. I don't think you come back from you know seeing your leg facing the other way and make it back to to be be the player he has been. And you know, if, if you really look at his his numbers over at Celtics blog, some of the guys are breaking it down, and there's going to be a piece coming out soon where he is. You know, as you look at it, his shooting numbers are fantastic. It's just, you know, what happens, unfortunately, for Gordon Hayward is he'll have four or five games in a row that are pretty good. And it's always that one bad game that everybody wants to jump on him. And, you know, we pay this guy $30 million and he, you know, went 0 for 5 from 3, as if that doesn't happen to just about every player in the league. I think a lot of the criticism of him is unfair. But, you know, I think it's more of a physical thing for him that this has helped this downtime than anything mental. I think he's pretty mentally strong anyway. Yeah, I agree, uh, Keith. You know, a lot of people tend to forget, or it's easy to forget, that Gordon Hayward isn't in the same situation he was in Utah. He's not the number one option. He's not the number two option. But he's one heck of a fourth option. I mean, look around the league. What team has a fourth option guy like this, putting up 17, 6, and 4? He's shooting 50% from the floor. I mean, that's the that's a career best. But no one talks about that because they're looking at, like Keith said, oh, the 8-point eight, eight performance, or he went 3-for-11 uh, the other night. Oh, yeah, he scored 27 in Indiana. But what about that eight-point performance? Well, he's not necessarily the top guy that you have to worry about. If he puts up a dud, that the team is going to lose or go downward into a losing streak. You know, he's just in that role. He's done one heck of a job at it, you know, uh, at the fourth option for this team. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with Keith. I, I'm, that's the last person I'm really worried about in terms of being mentally tough. He's already shown that the last two years. And I'm going with my answer for who benefits the most, Jalen Brown, because, but for a little bit of a different reason, one of them being he gets to work out with his grandfather, who apparently <laughs> seems to be on his stuff. He has got him working. Jalen Brown says it was out of breath, harder than some NBA workouts he's been through. So, you know, his conditioning is going to be top notch and it always helps to 
spend some extra quality time with his family. You know, these NBA players don't really get that luxury during their long season. And he was playing at an extremely high caliber. There was a lot of conversation about him potentially being an all-star had to be disappointing for him when he wasn't, even though he handled it really, really well. Can this time to put that out of his memory and get back to the really high level of play he was achieving uh, before this break. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jalen Brown has been, you can make a case that he's been the most consistent player all year long, if you really think about it. I mean, there were stretches where uh, Jason Tatum struggled and Kemba didn't. When Jason Tatum's going off, Kemba struggled a bit. But he's just been that steady force on both ends of the floor, uh, that outside threat, which makes things so much easier for his uh, teammates. And he's just so flexible and is able to guard so many different positions on the other end. And I, I really, do, Sierra, we talked about it for months. That contract extension, I just feel like it just turned into a huge confidence booster. Yeah. And it continues to thrive. He's just, he hasn't, he hasn't really slowed down, if you think about it. Yeah, I think for a guy like Jalen and a guy like Daniel Tice, they've been defending guys who are a lot bigger than them a lot of the year. And I think for both of them, this is a chance to, you know, just really kind of, but they're well, well clearly you know Jalen's grandfather is working him hard out mm-hmm. there it, it is you know pretty comical to see and I think that's great but he's not doing all that banging with much bigger players he's the guy that takes on a lot of the bigger guys for the Celtics because they tend to be you know a team that goes a little smaller and the same with Daniel Tice he's more of a power forward size guy who plays the five and is you know doing a lot of the dirty work inside so I think that that's a great call I think Jalen will come back strong and that's one of the things that that I'm looking forward to and talking to folks around the league they think the Celtics are well positioned because they've got so many young guys Mm -hmm. who can get out there and run and they think that can be a difference as these teams come back they're not going to take it sounds like they're going to get these games you know seven eight games whatever it is to play themselves ready but they're not going to take you know a month to really get into shape they should be able to hit the ground running better than a lot of other teams Absolutely. And for all of our Celtics and NBA coverage, as we lead up to the resumption of play, check it out on our website at clnsmedia.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Celtics All Access.